welcome to a new edition of Kino. Everything on today's show revolves around the 25th Munich Film Festival. So let's start the tour. Newcomers and old pros, the Munich Film Festival. German diva, behind the scenes with Katja Riemann. A man of extremes, the cinema of Werner Herzog. For decades, Munich was the center of Germany's film industry. Now, a lot of talent has also moved to Berlin, but Munich continues to play an important role for German cinema. And the Munich Film Festival is still the industry's biggest summer event. The festival's 25th anniversary was a showcase for Oscar winners, young filmmakers and film legends. <laughs> The Munich Film Festival has a relaxed, cozy atmosphere. It's gained a reputation as a place to discover smaller, independent cinema. Oscar-winning director Volker Schlöndorf, one of the festival's founders, enjoys coming here year after year. This is a große It's a large showcase for independent films you wouldn't ordinarily hear about. For a lot of us, the Munich Film Festival, a lot of American independent filmmakers, we get our international premieres here, and it's a special festival for all of us. William Friedkin's new film, Bug, is also getting its German premiere here. Also an Oscar winner, Friedkin is perhaps best known for the movie The Exorcist. But in Munich, the focus is on the films, not the stars. What is that? Hey, you see it? It's a bug. Like The Exorcist, Friedkin's latest is a horror film. In Bug, a Gulf War veteran believes he's been contaminated by chemicals and that insects are devouring him from inside. Friedkin appeared at ease in Munich. The festival is a relaxed meeting place for film industry professionals. It's always been a very important place for all kinds of film, but the German film even today I think is very powerful and uh, and promising. Such as Autistic Disco. Herzlich willkommen noch mal alle zusammen in dieser wunderschönen Landschaft. It's an example of the traditional Heimatfilm genre, but one that avoids kitsch. I think the discovery of home or Heimat was a real leap forward for German cinema. People looked close to home for stories to tell and went from there. That was necessary. 25 years on, the Munich Film Festival has no plans to change its cinecentric focus, and filmmakers from around the world value that commitment. It's hard being an actor. The public often confuses the part with the real person. Katja Riemann is all too familiar with this dilemma. She became a star in the 1990s, playing the bubbly blonde in a string of hit comedies, but the real Riemann is private and reserved. Now, her latest movie, Ein fliehendes Pferd, opened in Munich. We took the opportunity to meet with Riemann and peer beneath the surface. Katja Riemann's latest project is an adaptation of the famous novella Ein fliehendes Pferd or Runaway Horse by Martin hey, Walser. A married couple are on vacation at Lake Constance. This is close. Uh, hello. What starts as a vacation becomes a kind of romance between childhood friends and their partners. Love mixes with jealousy and a touch of midlife crisis. Wir werden von den beiden verführt. Wir sollten aufpassen. The film was directed by Rainer Kaufmann. It's his sixth collaboration with Katja Riemann. Für mich ist sie eine der ganz großen. I think she's one of the all-time greats in German cinema. The camera loves her. I've never seen anything like it. When she goes in front of the camera, you get the impression that everything around her fades away. Riemann's been in the film business for over two decades. She was the face of German cinema in the 1990s. Her movies were a success at the box office, but critics often slammed her. Perhaps in response, Riemann became more selective, picking roles which showed her versatility. I couldn't really say how I really am, and I don't worry about it. 
Sun schon so viel. A lot of other people do that for me. Sondern man bemerkt, dass I've es I'm many things. viele Dinge in einem gibt. Das ist ja eigentlich And sehr schön. Beautiful. Sehr reich. It's a cornucopia. And perhaps it's more of an attempt to accept everything the way it is. Anzunehmen, was da alles ist. At 43, Katja Riemann has started acting her age. She no longer needs to play the sexy leading lady. These days, Riemann prefers more challenging and realistic characters. In the movie Life Actually, she plays the owner of a modern art gallery, trying to balance family and career while retaining a sense of humor. Oh, das tut mir leid. Landschaften sind leider geradeaus. Für mich gehört Verwandlung zur Schauspielerei. I think versatility is an important part of acting. And of course, acting changes, especially as you age. Verwandelt, im besten Fall. The great thing about this profession is that you never stop learning. Du bist nie fertig mit Lernen. If Katja Riemann hadn't become an actress, she probably would have pursued a career in singing. She's released one album and can still be tempted to belt out a pop or jazz number. You can say something is positive, negative, horrible, wonderful or devastating. The main thing is that it's alive. And maybe that's the beauty of aging. You can always say, there's always something. Riemann doesn't limit her efforts to the entertainment world. Since 1999, she's been a UNICEF ambassador. Last year, she traveled to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Over a quarter of a million local women are the victims of rape each year, and many are forced to leave their villages. UNICEF helps them start a new life. Katja Riemann supports the project. <laughs> I've learned the UNICEF approach of trying to bring hope, light, and take steps to make a difference. And it really can be done. I've seen it. You can really make a difference. After two decades of success, Katja Riemann could sit back and take it easy. But it appears she always wants to keep moving forward. In Berlin, she took a stage role in Ingmar Bergman's Scenes from a Marriage. Based on the Swedish director's 1973 film, it's the story of a relationship in meltdown. The production was a hit with many critics, praising Katja Riemann for striking just the right tone. I think I try to be aware of every day and be active and enjoy life every day. I think it's an incredible privilege to be alive. Life is a great concept. It's precious. Riemann's new feature film is intelligent and ambiguous, yet still entertaining. Her acting has become more subtle, and she's added a touch of irony to her performance making her even more captivating than a decade ago. In real life, Katja Riemann appears careful and reserved. But as an actress, she gives everything she's got. Can a dog teach us to be human? And how do you find love in five minutes or less? Our shortcuts have the answers. Max has a dream. He's a lonely boy who wants a friend. And he gets one, a furry faced one, Mr. Wolf. But he still has to convince his father. Nein, es kommt nicht in Frage, dass sie haaren, sie bellen und sie stinken. A new dog and a new woman. Herr Sternheim? Lichtblau. Die neue Mieterin. Mr. Wolf is based on the best-selling children's book by author Paul Maher, who specializes in combining the ordinary and the magical. The magic here comes in the form of a mysterious mixture that transforms Max's dog. No, 
Max. Max. Du, du bist ein Mensch. Du bist ein Mensch. Was machen Sie in meinem Schlafzimmer? Popular comic actor Armin Rode plays Mr. Wolf, a dog who can't adjust to human norms. Der Bello ist ein Mensch. Und wenn die Blase drückt, dann hebt der Bello sein Hinterbein. Halt! Stopp! Er muss wieder zum Mund werden. Ich kann ihn doch erziehen. Viel Spaß. And of course, there's a happy ending. Dad falls in love. The dog man, or is it man dog, learns human manners, sort of. Macht er das nicht sehr elegant? Er ist unter Hunden aufgewachsen, in einer Berghöhle. Man nennt ihn dort den Kasperhauser vom Grödnertal. Für dich. Mr. Wolf, wholesome family entertainment with plenty of puppy love. Was bist du denn für einer? Bello ist ein Mensch. Shoppen or Shopping is a film about speed dating. Singles looking for love pay an agency to meet an assembly line of strangers in one evening. They have five minutes to make a good impression. Über was soll man reden, ha? Huh? Ich glaube, du findest mich gut. Sex ist mein Hobby. Wird ja langsam richtig anstrengend. Was Männer immer rummärmern müssen, echt. Ich bin kein bisschen arrogant. Ich habe Höhenangst. Es geht so weit, dass ich schon keine Schuhe mit Absatz tragen kann. Sei mir nicht böse, aber das klappt nicht mit uns beiden. Da brauchen wir uns gar nicht quälen. Was machen wir denn da eigentlich? What are we doing? This is combining relationships with market mechanisms. That alone creates a slight sense of alienation. These are two areas that don't have anything to do with each other. And when you combine them, it becomes problematic. Dann wird's problematisch. Nine men, nine women and nine sets of five-minute conversations. Shoppen is a film about a generation that doesn't want to commit. Ich bin schrecklich unentschlossen. Selbst wenn ich mich schon entschieden habe. Bis zur letzten Sekunde bin ich unentschlossen, obwohl ich hundertprozentig weiß, dass die richtige Entscheidung ist und das alles andere Wahnsinn wäre. Wieso jetzt entscheiden? Why decide? Something better could come along tomorrow. It's just too bad if it doesn't happen tomorrow, but the day after. Or if the person you meet thinks the same and also wants to keep looking. München is a Lebensfalle. Du sitzt im Café, freust dich über den Föhn, trinkst Cappuccino und bist du 55 Jahre alt. Und plötzlich stellst du fest, dass alle ein Leben gelebt haben. Nur du, du hast Cappuccino getrunken. Shoppen, a comedy that may hit close to home. Director Marco Kreuzpeintner is just 30 years old and never went to film school. But he's already released two films which attracted attention not only in Germany, but also across the Atlantic. German-born Hollywood director Roland Emmerich took Kreuzpeintner under his wing for his latest film. The result was unveiled in Munich. These are the stars of the 25th Munich Film Festival, the team from the movie Trade, which was produced by Roland Emmerich and directed by his protégé Marco Kreuzpeintner. Emmerich's films have earned millions at the box office. He's a master of special effects. His last film simulated a huge flood in New York. But he stepped behind the scenes for his latest project. Originally, Emmerich wanted to direct Trade himself, but picked Kreuzpeintner after seeing his coming-of-age, coming-out drama, Summer Storm. That's a total mich echt total. I always believe that passion and emotion are important. He read the screenplay and didn't know I wasn't making the film. He was incredibly authentic and incredibly emotional about it. Adriana's childhood in Mexico comes to a sudden end. The story is very real, one about child trafficking and forced prostitution. 
das Drehbuch zu Trade, das hieß damals noch The Girls Next Door. The screenplay for Trade was called The Girls Next Door. It was based on an article in the New York Times magazine, which had been researched by a famous American investigative journalist named Peter Landesmann. He caused an unbelievable scandal in America with his findings. It was the first time the story was exposed. He wrote about a modern form of slavery in America, where rich Americans have young women and children kidnapped, and then they're smuggled across the Mexican border and into the United States. Adriana is also kidnapped and taken to the United States. She's photographed for potential clients. Her brother Jorge follows the sex traffickers. Crossing the border himself, he meets Ray, a Texas cop played by Kevin Klein. Together, they travel halfway across the country, looking for Adriana. I knew that there was human trafficking, but I didn't know that people are auctioned off over the internet. That's the biggest perversion capitalism ever created. And it's happening in the 21st century, when we think that slavery doesn't exist anymore, but there is a modern form of slavery. Jorge wants to prevent his sister from being sold to the highest bidder. With Ray's help, he makes plans to rescue her. He delves into an underground world where people are bought and sold. And the cost of a human life starts at just 500 US dollars. Despite little in the way of real action, the film remains suspenseful until the end. Trade won the Vicky Peace Prize in Munich, in part due to the young actor's captivating performances. He was helping me a lot with my uh, performance, otherwise I wouldn't be able to deliver the kind of stuff I deliver in the film. Yeah. It's pretty much the work of the director. It was great for me to work with Marco. Once again, Kreuzpeitner proves he understands the emotional lives of teenagers. That makes Trade so convincing, and his mentor Roland Emmerich so very proud. From a young filmmaker to an old pro, Werner Herzog is the cult filmmaker's cult filmmaker. His love of extremes in cinema and in life are legendary. Herzog turns 65 this year and Munich said happy birthday with a big retrospective of his impressive body of work. Longing, fear, visions. Films about extreme personalities who do extreme things in extreme landscapes. Films about the fight for happiness or glory. The search for paradise. Director Werner Herzog is constantly drawn to seek out the new and unknown. He shoots his films in the Antarctic and the Amazon. It isn't wanderlust that drives me into the Amazon, but a story. I'm a storyteller. And if a story is about Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century looking for El Dorado, then you don't film it in the Bavarian forest. Werner Herzog made an international name for himself with the film Aguirre, the Wrath of God, starring Klaus Kinski in the title role. Wenn wir das Meer erreichen, werden wir ein größeres Schiff bauen und damit nach Norden segeln und Trinidad der spanischen Krone entreißen. Ich bin ja immer auch I've always been on a search for an ecstatic truth, something that makes us step outside of ourselves. It's perhaps similar to what happened to mystics in the late Middle Ages. There's a truth that lies beyond the realm of facts. Herzog made his first feature-length film, Signs of Life, at age 24, for which he received Germany's equivalent of the Oscar, the German Film Prize. His career spans 60 movies about adventurers and madmen whose commitment to their passions drives them to the edge. <laughs> Das 
Herzog has created unforgettable images and stories. Fitzcarraldo is the tale of an opera fanatic who envisions a theater in the jungle told to the strains of Caruso's singing. Werner Herzog creates new worlds in his films, which in turn helped create a new kind of cinema. With actor Klaus Kinski, Werner Herzog shared a volatile friendship and artistic partnership that often veered sharply into bitter hatred. Herzog made five of his best films with the eccentric genius. I remember well my first encounter with Kinski. I was 13 years old. It was in Munich, on Elisabethstraße. My mother was just making a start of things in Munich and was living in a boarding house, whose landlady, an older woman, had a soft spot for starving artists. One day she brought Kinski there. He was living in an attic apartment, was always stark naked and shoveled autumn leaves knee-high in the place. He was a self-styled wild man and great artist. I just stared at him the way you'd stare at a tornado. Kinski was famous for his choleric rants, like here on the set of Fitzcarraldo, a scene Herzog selected for his documentary on Kinski, My Best Fiend. It didn't really bother me. Even if he was difficult to work with, and the crew and other actors thought he was the plague, someone you just wanted to whack from behind with a shovel, that wasn't really important. Because it was always clear that we were creating something for the screen that was very special. All the river above Pongo das Mortis belongs to us. I knew it, I knew it. We are going to build a tunnel for the railway to go through. No, no. We're going to drag that ship over the mountain. And the bear asses are going to help us. Werner Herzog has repeatedly submitted himself and his cast and crew to the whims of nature, driving them to the limits of the physically possible. For Fitzcarraldo, he had his team pull an actual ship up a mountain in the Andes. He's restless, always searching for new, sensational locations. As soon as he becomes interested in a story, he organizes his entire life around the new project. I would race home, grab a few things and my passport. And my wife would ask where I was going. And I'd say, up a mountain that's about to erupt. I had a little child and a wife, and they didn't know if I'd come back alive. It's remarkable that a relationship could survive under those conditions. Because it's not actually livable in the long run. It's definitely problematic. Flight. In his film about ski jumper Walter Steiner, Herzog laments that humans can leave the ground and fly for only brief moments at a time. The person most like me is perhaps Walter Steiner, the two-time ski-flying world champion, about whom I made a film called The Strange Ecstasy of Woodcarver Steiner. I'd wanted to be world champion myself, and as a young lad trained intensively in ski jumping. But then a friend of mine had a very serious accident. That shocked me so badly that it was suddenly over for me. But I never lost the dream of being able to fly, of being weightless. His new film is also about that dream. Rescue Dawn is based on the true story of a German man, a pilot in the United States Air Force, who was shot down over Vietnam and taken prisoner. He escapes and flees alone through the jungle to freedom. Rescue Dawn is yet another example of Werner Herzog's cinema of extremes. If Fitzcarraldo is still missing from your Werner Herzog collection, we can help you out. You can win one of these DVDs. The story is pure Herzog, 
A man fights nature and society as he tries to build an opera house in the middle of the jungle. Now, just write to us and tell us how you like the show. Here's the address. DWTB, Kino, Wolterstrasse 6 in 13355 Berlin. Email kino at dwworld.de. That's all we have time for. Thanks for watching and don't miss our next edition. Until then, have a great time at the movies.